Hey, second grade, are you ready for chapter two of Mr. Peabody and Sherman and their Sherman's Awesome Adventures? Here we go with chapter two. I'm sorry I bit her, I said as Mr. Peabody tucked me in that night. I won't do it again. You're darn tootin' you won't do it again, Mr. Peabody replied. After the lunchroom fight, the principal called Mr. Peabody into a meeting. A woman from the Bureau of Bureau of Child Safety and Protection was there. Her name was Miss Gruden. Mr. Peabody said, we're in big trouble. Penny's parents wanted to file a complaint. Miss Gruden was even coming to our house to investigate. It's just not like you, Mr. Peabody said. What happened? She called me a dog, I whispered. I didn't want to hurt his feelings. After all, being a dog wasn't a bad thing. But Penny sure had made it seem that way. Suddenly, Mr. Peabody didn't seem mad anymore. Thank you for telling me. Try to get some sleep. I love you, Mr. Peabody, I called. I have a deep regard for you as well, Sherman, he said, closing the door as he left. I tossed and turned all night. What would happen if Penny's family filed a complaint? Would I still be allowed to live with Mr. Peabody? All of our adventures swirled through my head. One stupid fight could ruin all of that. Could it? The next afternoon, I found Mr. Peabody cooking a feast in the kitchen. Wow, I exclaimed. Is today a special occasion? You could say, Mr. Peabody answered. I tried to figure out what made today special. It's not my birthday, I started. No, said Mr. Peabody. It's not your birthday, I said. Right again, he replied. Is the president coming again? No, said Mr. Peabody. I was stumped. Just then, the doorbell rang. Mr. Peabody hurried to answer it. I trailed behind him. So who's coming to dinner, I pressed. Let's just say that if this evening is a success, we can put this biting business behind us, Mr. Peabody replied. He threw open the door. My jaw dropped in shock. Three people stood in our doorway. One of them had blonde hair and a bad attitude. The Petersons, Peabody announced. As in Penny Peterson and her parents? Why on earth would Mr. Peabody invite them to dinner? We're delighted you can make it, Mr. Peabody said, bowing. Aren't we, Sherman? Yeah, I mumbled. We're interested in what's going on for sure. Mr. Peabody ignored my comment. Say hello to Penny, Sherman. I couldn't believe this. Not only was my worst enemy standing in my own hallway, now Mr. Peabody expected me to talk to her. Hi, Penny, I grumbled. Penny didn't look happy either. Hello, Sherman, she muttered. She clenched her bandaged arm. Why don't you go sh show Penny your mineral collection, Sherman? Mr. Peabody suggested. Dragging my feet, I led Penny to my room. What was Mr. Peabody thinking, inviting the Petersons for dinner? Maybe he hoped they wouldn't file a complaint if they got to know us. All I knew was that no matter how fancy the dinner, Penny and I would never be friends. After what seemed like forever, Mr. Peabody checked on us. What were we supposed to do in here anyway? She hates me, I whispered. Just make it work, Mr. Peabody murmured. But don't hurt, tell her about the way back. I closed the door and turned, and turned toward Penny. Don't even think about it, she said, fuming. You know, Penny, I said, Frigman saw it. Sigmund Freud says if you don't like a person, it's because they remind you of something you don't like about yourself. Penny glared at me. What do you know about Sigmund Freud, she asked. More than you think, I replied. Mr. Peabody and I had visited the famous psychologist in the way back. Just like you know all about George Washington. What a crock, Penny said. But it's true, I exclaimed. How do you know, Penny demanded. I just know, I said. Did you read it in a book, she asked, annoyed. No, I said. 
Did your brainiac dad tell you? No, I replied. So how do you know, Sherman, she said, poking me in the ribs. How do you know? I couldn't take the pressure no more. He told me. I blurted it out. Penny looked suspicious. Who told you? George Washington, I said. Liar, Penny rolled her eyes. I was not a liar. So to prove it, I told Penny the one thing Mr. Peabody asked me not to. Should have known it. It would only make things worse. Hmm. What do you think Penny's going to do with that information? Mr. Peabody told him not to tell, and it sounds like he ended up telling. Do you think that Penny and Sherman are going to be friends? You'll have to wait to chapter three.